what the hell is going on? <laughs> Some people, man. In Africa, yeah, Gambia. Shocking. I just did some calculations based on their GDP and their population. Average, uh, average uh, salary is about eight hundred dollars a year. They're subsistence farmers. Wow! Wow! He was living the dream, man. One in a one in a probably one in maybe fifty thousand Gambians. Or maybe one in 10,000 Gambians gets to come to America and live the life. He was over here living the life, working at a shop, having a family, wife pregnant. He probably didn't even sell his sister the car or lease her the car. She comes in, well, for the matter of moments, he's dead. Let's see what else is going on in Milwaukee, man. Yeah, it was shocking. Um, just the the brazenness uh, of it all. Tonight, Milwaukee's mayor expressing anger after watching this surveillance video obtained by 12 News, capturing a teen opening fire at point blank range. Seeing a gun, you know, it's going to be scary. Wednesday, 5 p.m. rush hour at the busy intersection of James Lovell and Wisconsin Avenue. Video shows one teen punch a man. Another pulls out a gun and shoots him in the stomach. He falls to the ground. A witness nearly in the crossfire appears to snap a picture, then helps the man as the three teens run off. Do you call 911? That's what I was doing on the phone. I tried to get the. You see the difference when the gliders around? <laughs> see the difference, man? If a glider doesn't come around, he could be laying there for 30, 40 <laughs> minutes before anybody calls the police or calls. Ambulance. Salute to Deluxe 247, a.k.a. Calvary, a.k.a. The Real MVP, coming through once again. That's big, man. Eric Scott coming through for like the 20th straight day. Salute to y'all, bros. Y'all really keep the show going, man. I really appreciate y'all contribution, man. Yeah, man. Salute there, man. Salute to this glider, man. Glider jumped into... And... This glider, unfortunately, this guy doesn't know that everybody standing right here thinks that all of their problems are because of these people. Like all of these people. Like they I'm not gonna say they hate that glider, but they think he's responsible for all the ills in the world. They scapegoat him for every one of their issues. Yeah. Salute to that glider, though. Why was he just standing right there? Like, what was he doing? Is this a bus stop? Oh, this might be a bus stop. I don't know. Is this a bus stop? Because it's a bus right here. I don't know. Why is this white guy just standing right here? Yo, this is the unsafest. Listen, some sons arguing. He's lucky he's not dead. Is he just standing right there? Maybe he's waiting to cross because you got the traffic going there. Maybe he's waiting to cross the street. Mm, gliders. Let me just pull you gliders over here, man. Because some people, I mean, you know, it is what it is, man. But gliders, if you ever see something like this, you, you're the safest place for you is on this side where the building is between you because there this is there's loud talking going on right here right johnny would you say that would it safe to be presumed that yes and the things that are being said are not friendly right a lot of n words yeah a lot of <laughs> n words a lot of terms of endearment going being spewed and um so you don't want to go this way because you get shot in the back with a straight bullet. You don't want to go this way because if the sun man runs, if, even if you go this way, the guy can run and bend the corner and they can chase him and start shooting at him. But this would probably be the best way immediately to get, have a building or something, um, something that can stop a bullet between you and them. Just standing right here looking at some arguing, just fucking moronic, man. 
Like you're a fucking idiot, man. This white guy's a fucking moron, man. Of James Lovell in Wisconsin Avenue. Video shows one teen punch a man. Another pulls out a gun and shoots him in the stomach. He, f- he just walks up, though. I mean, he shouldn't have walked around the corner with them yelling at, at each other. But, you know, he kind of just walked up. Hey, you're muted, Doc. As a glider, though. You gotta be, y'all the ones claiming I have all this IQ. I mean, I keep hearing about all this fucking IQ, and I'm really starting to fucking doubt that shit, man. Like, if you you walk up on this and you're supposed to be use your IQ to make a split second decision. IQ doesn't mean street smarts. Yeah. Pulls out a gun and shoots him in the stomach. He falls to the ground, a witness. Oh, yeah, he didn't really have much time, yeah. Between the time of the, he hits the corner to the shooting is almost probably a second and a half. Let's see. And shoots him in the One, stomach. He falls two, to the ground, a witness. Two seconds. It was two seconds between the time he hit the corner. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that. Yeah, I can't I can't blame this glider. And let me, I take back everything I said about this glider. Video shows one teen punch a man. Another pulls out a gun and shoots him in the stomach. He falls to the ground. A witness nearly in the crossfire appears to snap a picture, then helps the man as the three teens run off. Do you call 911? That's what I was doing on the phone. I tried to get the picture, but then I realized we got cameras here. So I was like, called 911. But as I was on the phone with 911, an ambulance was coming down flagged them down and we were able to get him in there right away. So. Police believe they're between the ages of 15 and 18. Yeah, it, it is troubling, right? Um, sure enough, I mean, no person at that age uh, should have their hands on a gun at all. Police say the teens were trying to steal the man's electric bike. The owner of In-N-Out Pantry on the corner tell. Oh, so they were just trying to steal the guy's electric bike. Okay. So, yeah, I mean. Should have gave up the bike, man. Wouldn't yeah, have should have just gave it up, man. It's a lot less expensive than a hospital bill. That, that doesn't yeah. make your advice wrong. Is if you uh, see some uh, side men arguing on the corner, duck back around behind the building, because uh, you know you have about a one in fifty percent chance of getting shot with a bullet if you're staying around that corner where they're at. <laughs> yeah, he only let off one uh, shot. Uh, a one in 50 chance just because, you know, he's going to let out a lot of, sh- he might let out a lot of shots and you never know where they're going. <laughs> I mean, I think this one, this was, they just plugged this guy as a punishment for not giving up the bike. But this wasn't like a, um, this wasn't like a shoot him up, bang, bang. This was just like, oh, you're not going to give us the bike? Here, take that with you. You know what I'm saying? Just, just, just to like, like a, like a, you know what I'm saying? A, um, a fucking um, punishment. They just a lashing, except they gave him a lashing with a gun. We were trying to steal the man's electric bike. The owner of In and Out Pantry on the corner tells 12 News he's friends with the 39 year old victim, and the bike is his friend's only way to get to work in Brown Deer every day after thieves stole his car last month. I know. <laughs> man, listen, man. You, this guy right here, this white guy, you can tell he's a white guy. You can see his hands. This white guy right here, or he's even white or whatever. Maybe he's, let's just say, every everybody on that corner was white. So it looks like that guy might be white too, right? Is it safe to presume that that guy was white? Hit one if it's safe to presume that the guy who got shot is white. Say about seventy five percent chance. There might be an umbrito. They're working hard. Yeah. This guy can't say anything on social media. If he tweets, he has to run it past a fucking editor. <laughs> he had to submit it to an editor before he tweets up. He can't say he he can't say for shizzle my nizzle. He can't say. Latino, he got to say Latinx, he can't, he can't 
give a son person a compliment, if he's giving the son person a compliment, he better make sure that it's not a microaggression. He can't use gifts. He can't use memes. He can't. He could live on a block where everyone has a Biden sign in their yard. But if he puts a Trump sign in his yard, he'll be ostracized and maybe even lose his fucking job or fucking be branded a racist. And on top of that, after they steal his car, they they shoot him while trying to steal his electric bike. At some point, as a glider male, and I know you say, John, you say it's coming. I just don't see it, man. This is just, it gets worse, getting worse, man. I don't see it, Johnny. It's getting worse, man. These stories are getting worse. It's going to have to get worse before <laughs> the the woke actually wake up to what's going on. I got to do a poll, man. Pause. Um, this Because I, I just don't. This story is just bad. Like, this guy literally can't do anything in the public sphere that normal people can do. Tweet, you know, post on Facebook, post on IG, use memes, use gifts, tell, uh, um, express openly who he supports politically. He can't do anything. And then on top of that, he gets his car stolen and then a couple weeks later gets shot for his fucking electric bike. In broad daylight, <laughs> and they didn't even grab the bike; they just left. Yeah, they just fuck, fuck you. You know what I'm saying? We, we, you know, just, just punished them. That was his punishment, man. To lose like probably like two feet of intestine, man, and fucking sit in the hospital and shit for fucking months. <laughs> <clears throat> wow. Mm -mm -mm. Wow. <laughs> well, it's his own fault. He didn't say, you know what? My car got stolen. Maybe I should get away from these guys. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, <laughs> Milwaukee's <Man>. rough. <laughs> yeah, man. Milwaukee is rough, Jack. <laughs> Golly, man. Make sure you take the poll, man. The poll is up, man. Make sure you take the poll. Pause. <laughs> God, don't. Don't take the poll, man. Take the poll. Take the poll, but don't take the poll unless you, unless you're, um, unless you're a, a sister or glider queen. But take the poll. Don't take the poll. You know what I mean? Um, God, oh, this is a rough story, man. I'm gonna try to listen to this all the way through and try to see if I can just like stomach it. This is a rough one, man. I. And then you got to get called a racist. God. After watching this surveillance video obtained by 12 News, capturing a teen opening fire at point blank range. Seeing a gun, you know, it's going to be scary. Right? Wednesday, 5 p.m. rush hour at the busy intersection of James Lovell and Wisconsin Avenue. Video shows one teen punch a man. Another pulls out a gun and shoots him in the stomach. He falls to the ground. A witness nearly in the crossfire appears to snap a picture, then helps the man as the three teens run off. Do you call 911? I, that's what I was doing on the phone. I tried to get the picture, but then I realized we got cameras here. So I was like, called 911. But as I was on the phone with 911, an ambulance was coming down flagged them down and we were able to get him in there right away. So. Police believe they're between the ages of 15 and 18. Yeah, it is troubling, right? Um, sure enough, I mean, 
no person at that age uh, should have their hands on a gun at all. Police say the teens were trying to steal the man's electric bike. The owner of In-N-Out Pantry on the corner tells 12 News he's friends with the 39-year-old victim. And the bike is his friend's only way to get to work in Brown Deer every day after thieves stole his car last month. I know that somebody out there knows exactly who it is that pulled that trigger. And so that's what I'm asking for folks in Milwaukee to do. You look at that video, you see the people who were involved, and you call that information in. Because if they're willing to shoot somebody you know, for a bike, then they're willing to go out in neighborhoods and hurt other people. And we don't want that to happen. And Hillary, that victim is recovering tonight. Yeah, Kristen, and the store owner, he didn't want to speak on camera, but he told me he went to see him in the hospital today. We're hearing he could be released uh, tonight, but no arrest yet. So if you have any information, if you know anything, you are asked to call police. You can also leave an anonymous tip with Crime Stoppers, that number 414-935-73. What if that kid, what if he wanted to kid that something to do? That was hysterical, man. God damn. That was right down the road from where the immigration lawyer got shot by Theodore Edgecombe a few uh, a few years ago. Mm. Yeah, man, it's 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 rough. It's real in the field down there, man. Milwaukee is rough, rough. A quiet Friday night at home turned horrifying. We was just chilling, and then we heard gunshots for Debbie Davis and her family. They went from watching TV to getting on the crawling on the floor for their for their lives because somebody just was out here on a rampage shooting. A stray bullet from a shooting outside their Milwaukee house made its way inside. That window right there, that's where the bullet came in. And grazed Davis's five-year-old son, Devontae Walton, directly above his left eye. <laughs> Jesus. Oh my God. Christ. No way. Jesus Christ. Wow. Oh my God. <laughs> Brown Sugar's prayers work for this kid. Yeah, shout out to Brown Sugar, man. <laughs> That's barely even going to be a scar. Man. And we've seen this story so many times. This is a story that like literally, like we we do this story every couple of days, at least every three or four days. And that's not going to every city. That's only going to five or six cities a day. If, imagine if we went to just every city, every night in the country. Probably do this story maybe what, five or six times a day. It's life in Blackistan, man left eye if my baby would have been in close to the tv i wouldn't have had my baby would have went through instead of his eye it would it would have went through his skull milwaukee police say this shooting also injured another person a 37 year old milwaukee man they say he was driving at the time of the shooting that victim <laughs> and these are the people that are like literally harassing honey boo boo and I know you guys probably say, well, you know, like uh, these shooters that listen, if that shooter is on social media and he sees that Honey Boo Boo did a TikTok with a ghetto voice, he going to tweet something. He going to reply something like in the comment section like, damn, it's 2023 and this, this, this shit still going on, man. We thought, though, we was past this. I promise you. Another person, a 37-year-old Milwaukee man, they say he was driving at the time of the shooting. That victim is expected to survive. And as for Devante, he appears to be back to acting like any other five-year-old. Can you show me where, where you're hurt? How's it feeling today? Good. But his mom fears there will likely be a lasting impact. When the sun go down and it get dark time, my baby be saying that the people go come back. To the message to the community. Damn, the people gonna come back. 
Yeah, he's got to be terrified, man. If I would be terrified. If that shit happened to me, man, I'd have PTSD. It's hard to stand in front of a fucking window if that shit happens, some shit like that happens. Impact. When the sun go down and it get dark time, my baby be saying. She just spit them out. She got a whole fucking brood up there. She got a whole fucking brood. Jesus. Oh, and it get dark time. My baby be saying that the people go come back. To the message to the community, just stop shooting. Put your guns down. In Milwaukee, Hannah Hilliard, WYSN 12 News. At this point, Milwaukee police have not made any arrest in this investigation. Uh, did you cover the, in Sacramento, there's a double shooting at a Sikh temple? Oh, double shooting? No, I haven't covered that. Um, I got a link to the back chat. All right, thank you. A Racine man has been sentenced to 10 years in prison for killing a woman in 1986. Lou Griffin pleaded no contest January 27th in Brown County Circuit Court to a charge of homicide by reckless conduct. The 67-year-old was charged in 2020 with first-degree intentional homicide in Lisa Holstead's killing. Her body was found in a Green Bay swamp in August of 1986. Holstead. How much you want to bet Lisa Holstead's a glider? Who wants to bet that? Who wants to take that bet? Huh? Not me. <laughs> Who wants to take that bet? Anybody want to take that bet that Lisa Holstead is a glider, man? I'm. You see any stories a lot, Johnny, where um the DNA and all that shit is starting to catch all these old murderers from back in the day? I'm seeing that. I'm seeing those stories a lot. I just don't click on them because, I mean, there's so many of them. I haven't been seeing a whole lot of them, but I mean, it takes a lot of time to process the DNA and, and get. A I'm DNA talking match. about. I'm talking about the um, the um, not not that type of DNA. I'm talking about like, say I do a DNA test, right? To find ancestry DNA to find out you know my lineage. They the FBI is taking those, and they can find out like they can solve murders like that. Like they can, they'll be knocking on your second cousin's door a week later, talking about yeah, we we we, we match your DNA to, you know what I'm saying? They they doing that shit. They're, yeah, um, to find a person for a murder case that old, you know, thank God for all this innovation and DNA in order to solve this. Yeah, they they're doing that. Um, I mean, even my oldest cousin isn't even as old as this murder case. Yeah, this is pleading um, no contest means it's he's not saying yes, I did it, but he is saying, "Oh, you have enough evidence that I can't dispute it, and I'm not gonna go to trial." Yeah, it's um, let's 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 see let's see what happened, man. Um, let's see what happened, man. Let's see, let's see. Let's see if we can um, learn more about Lisa Halstead, man. Um, <laughs> learn more about Lisa Halstead, man. Well, I already lost the bet. <laughs> <laughs> the arrest of a man in. Listen, man. <laughs> I mean, like. I just knew, man. I just knew. Because most of those cases that I'm seeing. It's like this. I would say 75 to 80% of them are like this. Well, it was uh, the gliders uh, couldn't uh, go out to the fields and couldn't couldn't stay in the house, right? Ooh. So the New York Times said, right? 
Yeah, exactly. The arrest of a man in Green Bay's longest running cold case made headlines last fall. Tonight, Local 5's Aaron Taylor is looking into the background of the Lisa Holstead case in the first installment of Cold Case Thawed. Sometime between 1.30 and 2 in the morning on August 12, 1986, Lisa Ann Holstead jumped out of her boyfriend's car at this intersection. 12 hours later, he reported her missing. About an hour after that, her body would be discovered here at what's now the Ken Ewers Nature Area. Oh my God, no, I hope that's not Lisa. In 2005, Lisa's sister, Susan, spoke with Local 5 about missing her sister and everything Lisa had missed out on. Especially at times when, like the first day of school that her son started, she missed that. She missed um, her son getting married. Milestones missed by a mother whose case detectives never gave up on. In 2005, we spoke with the then lead detective on the case. We were able to reprocess evidence that we'd processed years ago or even recently and be able to gather more information off of it. Susan never gave up hope. Somebody back then, <clears throat> during the 19 years, have uh, grown up a little bit, maybe straightened out their path and uh, has a conscience to uh, help us out here. It wouldn't be a conscience development that ultimately led to the arrest of a suspected killer. Rather, new DNA technology used for the very first time in Green Bay led to the October 2020 arrest of 65-year-old Lou Archie Griffin, seen here in Brown County Court. This is the first case that um, I'm aware of that we've ever used any type of procedure. Don't let it be lost to you that his name is Archie Griffin. <laughs> man, what a fucking, what a fucking irony, man. The son man, the son man killed his name is Archie Griffin. <laughs> oh my God, man. Whew. So 35 years ago, he would have been, like, 25, 30. Yeah. Damn. And I'm sure he grew up in the 70s watching um, watching um, all, all in the, the family. family. Yeah, all in the family. And bitching about how racist Archie was. <laughs> I mean, um, and Archie. I mean, I, I meant, I meant to say, I meant to say Archie Bunk. I thought it was, uh, Archie Bunk, but not Archie Griffin. But, um, yeah, his name's Archie. But I mean, he probably was like, "Damn, why I gotta share names with that fucking racist guy?" <laughs> and then he fucking goes on, kills a white woman, and lives like for like forty years, just chilling, knowing he did that shit. Knowing he did that shit and just living and living his life. And listen, man, I I can't blame him for that, man. Like all that turn yourself in, nobody does blotters don't even do that. He got away with it. So I can't blame him for going on and living his life. I got Archie Bunker and Peter Griffin mixed up in my head. I'm tripping. Hey, both fat white guys. <laughs> yeah, both fat white guys and shit. Exactly. Green Bay led to the October 2020 arrest of 65-year-old Lou Archie Griffin, seen here in Brown County Court. This is the first case that um, I'm aware of that we've ever used any type of procedure like this. So. DNA technology only recently made available would heat up the cold case more than three decades after Lisa's death. The best cases for these types of uh, this type of investigation is really, you know, mostly it's typical towards violent crime, in in which a case where you pretty much exhausted all the other leads. Now leads may have been exhausted, but the drive to find out who was responsible for Lisa Holdstead's death was never extinguished. In Brown County, Aaron Taylor, Local Five News.